Do you know the difference between singles and doubles? Well, in pickleball, in singles, you have one person. In doubles, you have two people. I think everyone knows that. What is so strategic about this? In pickleball doubles, you could hit it to the weaker player every single time. Literally, almost every single time, except on serve, right? Being on the same page as your partner about where you're dropping, where you're returning, is so crucial. Or else, you'll get made into a human pinata by a beautiful girl. I don't know if that's a bad thing, you know? According to Colin Johns, the one true pro, this strategic decision on who to drop the third shot to is so important in pickleball and will allow you to win more matches. Knowing the difference between singles and doubles allows you to drop your third shot to the weaker player every single time. And it doesn't always have to be the weaker player, right? And we're going to go over it right now. First, let's see what senior pro extraordinaire Scott Moore says about this topic. Go ahead, Scott. The mental toughness begins with believing you can win and you can beat anyone. What you should do always is try to scout your opponent. You give them what they do not want. The bangers, you give softballs or you lob them, get them out of their game. Also want to decide who you're going to play in a match. If you don't know, one good way to to decide is on the first return of serve, hit it right down the middle. Whoever takes it, you should then start to avoid. They're telling you they're the stronger player. When you go forward, when your opponent gets the third shot, who's going to take the overhead? And those kind of things you should already have discussed way before you ever get on the court. This is why I always do bad. I never prepared for a tournament. And take a look, right? Was there any doubt who would take that overhead in this situation? No. We'll look at it in slow motion, and you'll agree with me. He returns it. And when you return the ball, you should probably return to the person most likely to miss the third shot drop or pop it up. And Denea, she's in the near right-hand corner. She has no doubt that her partner's taken the overhead, right? No doubt at all. Just like Scott Moore said, know this before you're playing in the tournament. I think anyone that's played a tournament knows pickleball is a game of percentages. And if you've been to a casino, you better have a good strategy or you're going to be bankrupt. Take a look at this drop. It's hung up a little high, right? And look at Denea's positioning. Perfect, right? She knew that her partner was dropping cross court, knew it might be hung up. And if it's hung up, look where she is on the court because this is where all people should be. All people! And what could have been an impossible reset turns into a routine reset by a very good player. Let's take a look at another point from the same game. Denea returns again to the person in blue. They may be weaker, right? So when you're returning, keep that in mind. Know what player has a stronger drive and the stronger drop, and we'll get to that later in the video. Knowing this and knowing what Colin John says about the third shot drop, if we can strategically drop to the same player every single time or the weaker player, we're going to get more side outs. We're going to lose less points on those crazy forehand rolls because one player might have it, one player doesn't, right? Now, in general, you want your third shot to go to the weaker player, right? Now, this is interesting. Take a look at this drop, right? That drop in, because the people on the other side of the court don't have these crazy forehand and backhand rolls because Cliff Pickleball would have really punished that. This is what Cliff would have done. Take your pens out, write this down. Know whether your opponents have these crazy forehand and backhand rolls. If they do, stay away from them. Go to that opponent might help you later in life or later in the day during rec play. Knowing pickleball is so strategic when we hit the third shot drop or return because when we're returning it's almost as important we want to target the weaker player right this is a universal rule universal and obviously whatever player is struggling with that third shot drop we should return to correct however some situations with anomalies will result one situation would be if there's a really strong player that has really offensive forehand and backhand roles we want to keep him back right so if they serve it we want to return deep to him so we keep him deep so we try to pin him to the baseline it's counterintuitive, but it works. It really does. It really does work. This is me. I return really deep, slice, backhand return to Jamie, who's a stronger player. I return purposely to the stronger player so he wouldn't be able to get to the kitchen and make me look horrible, slow, and no good. Because Jamie is a senior pro, wins every tournament he enters. He seriously does.
Also, some pickleball players are really good at shake and bacon. Usually the tennis player is coming into pickleball with those crazy carbon fiber paddles. So even if you're returning to your opponent with a more reliable drop, it's okay because we don't want them driving and shaking bacon because our reactions might not be there. So that's one scenario. I'm in the top left hand corner, just served, and I want this, right? I want to drive, I think I'm faster than Louis, and I want to make him pay. I feel that even though David is a better dropper, they should have went to David because I can do some serious damage because I'm a banger, I can shake and make, and that's what I want to do. Seriously. And along these lines, if your team has really fast reaction times, we want to return to the driver, right? Because we want some quick side outs. They drive. We can put it away quickly because we can handle those. So it depends what type of player you are. Heather and Jamie both have extremely good reaction times. They want me to drive. They return to the driver and they get what they want, right? I feel this is a perfect illustration of going to the driver, right? They go to me. They know exactly what I'm going to do. They want me to speed it up. They play into my hand. It is really important to communicate your third shot and return strategies with your partner throughout the match. You can change it in timeouts, but communication is key, especially if you want the goal. The key is staying disciplined. If you see your opponent has another weakness throughout the match, you can change strategies, but you and your partner need to be on the same page. One other thing you can do is to lob that third shot. Lob that third shot, see who takes the overhead, right? Because lots of times the person that takes the overhead is the alpha in the relationship. You see the third shot lob used in pickleball more and more. What I would suggest you to do in a tournament, lob that first one right down the middle, see who takes it. Scott Moore suggested this as well. I mean, I have a lot of really stupid ideas, but Scott Moore suggested this. Colin Johns is saying to do it once in a while. And I think this is overkill. I think this point's overkill. But what I'm saying is try it once or twice, not like forever. This point is so boring. We're invested though, let's see who wins it. I'm going with Martin Potovich in the blue shirt. And even though tip number five says drop across your opponent, you can see it right there. It's not always good if your partner doesn't have the fastest reaction times and you're dropping in front of them and your opponents are attacking him every time. You see Martin Potovich do it a lot. He has a red shirt most likely. Mark's in a blue shirt again. It's double zero on the roulette table. I lost all my money, but this is a very good concept. I just want to bring up your opponents have tendencies when they drop it. If you watch Jamie Onsen's, he drops in the middle, almost at Mark's backhand all the time. It doesn't really matter who he's playing. He's in white. How come he does this? In my opinion, he thinks he's the fastest person on the court, right? That way he can do this. He doesn't need his partner to shake and bake. He wants to do it himself. And Mark Nepotovic has really quick hands and he makes him look like a you know what. I'm not saying it. And take a look. He drops it again. Again, people have tendencies. Look, he's dropping to the same spot, right? And what's another tendency he does? This, right? He wants a fast hands battle. So if you think you have faster hands than your opponent, I would suggest you speed it up. Maybe drive more. You can return to the driver so they speed it up. Make your opponents play into your hand. Your hand. So it's a lot to think about, right? If we stay disciplined and talk to our partner, call timeouts, and let them know our strategies, we'll do a lot better. We'll do a lot better. And pickleball lovers, check this tip out. It's so good. And don't forget to have a good day.